Yo everyone, what's going on? Curryway here, and today we're we're back already for a new Minecraft 1.16.1 any percent RSG world record. This is incredible. The last world record, Xylanox is 745. It took 10 months for No Fear to beat it, and now No Fear's record has been beaten in just three weeks by an incredibly talented runner, Drip120. Now, if you have no idea who Drip is, I know it's not a name that a lot of people are familiar with. Let me give you a quick introduction. A lot of top runners are experienced with Drip because Drip plays a lot of MCSR ranked. I have a video explaining MCSR ranked. Basically, what it is, is it's a mod for Minecraft that allows you to speed run in 1v1 matches against other people. And Drip is very familiar with doing that. But Drip also has had two sub-7 end enters before this run, which which if you're not familiar with what that means, they enter the, the end in under seven minutes, which is basically sub eight pace, which is incredible. Right now, there are only four runs that are sub eight pace, including the new world record you're about to watch. And they've been on pace for this twice already before. They've also had a duos world record run before. So they are an incredibly skilled runner. Please go check them out in the description below. I've linked their YouTube, their Twitch, their Twitter, all that good stuff. Please go check them out. This is an incredibly deserved world record. And I'm really excited to do this analysis with you. All right, two quick things before we get into the run right here. First off, this is five minutes and 23 seconds into his stream that day. Getting world record five minutes and 23 seconds into a stream is crazy because you put so many hours into it. You're not really warmed up yet. It's just like first run, crazy. Absolutely nuts. Only live for an hour. And a lot of that was just like reacting after. Absolutely wild. And also drip in the chat saying, I hate RSG. Very based. Every top runner hates RSG, but they play the game and they cook and they do a great job at it. So let's load in here. We got the wall on the top. When Drip likes an instance, he's going to put it on the bottom. He's got three of them he likes. He's looking for a big orange spike. Doesn't get it in that one. We're looking here. Big orange spike. No, not in that second seed either. But on this third seed, big orange spike. So what he does is he makes his instance tinier and thinner. And what that does is by making it thinner, it's easier to find the chunk it's in. You saw for a split second there, he didn't see that big spike anymore. So he goes to the other chunk where this big spike is. And you can tell this is obviously where the buried treasure is by the stone. It's sticking out of the ground. It's just there. Loots everything really, really nicely, except for a little bit of scuffness at the end, but really clean otherwise. And also gets a piece of flint from the gravel on top, which is huge because instead of having to craft a pressure plate or something else that you wouldn't really use in the run, you just craft a pressure plate, which you're gonna, or you craft a flint and steel, which you're gonna use to light the portal and other stuff in the run. So really nice. Crafts everything that he needs. Sticks, boom. Shovel, pickaxe, axe, bucket, all this good stuff here. Boom. Boat, doors, and we're out. Drip is a very organized player, and you can tell, like, you saw him kind of organize his inventory when he was waiting for TNT. You can see him organize everything in this boat. Everything is perfectly in order. You can tell he did not mess up a single thing there, which is wild to do. Lowers his render distance. Everything is perfect. Very organized player. Wants everything to be perfect. Really good mindset. Remembers he has flint and steel already, so doesn't need to do that. This portal is beautiful. This is a two by one portal. It's only one deep of lava, so you have to be a little bit funky, but no hesitation building this. Really confident in portal builds. Nails it way faster than I could ever even imagine doing something like that. That was really, really well done. Instantly loads in, has a bastion, has to immediately go and bridge over. You can see he was looking around in F5 for a second. That was just looking for a fortress because in a treasure bastion, there's already a mob spawner and we use the pie chart for that blue spike, that mob spawner spike, where we want that. We want that as the um, fortress, but the treasure already has a mob spawner. So you can't use the normal strap for finding a fortress when you have a treasure bastion unless you break the spawner. So he was looking around there to try and find the fortress without using that. Doesn't see it though, so we're going to do the normal treasure out here. Comes up, again, no hesitation. Has done this hundreds, if not thousands of times before. Really good pace, but again, nothing like too crazy yet. This is all like, you're not going to get nerves or anything yet, especially a runner like Drip. This is not happening. So we're going to grab all the gold blocks. It's always the top two in the middle, the bottom left one in the middle, the top left, and the bottom right. Always going to be where the gold blocks spawn. On this left side one, you can also dig down to get another block. All these blocks have a 70% chance of being there. So pretty good luck on that side. Again, we're looking for the fort, looking for the fort. Don't see it. That's okay. We still got some time. We still have some some time to, to think about it. Going to check all the spots for the gold again. Diamond pick also in the treasure bastion is really useful because treasure you have to mine a lot. And when you have either a gold pick or an or a diamond pick, it just makes it a lot faster than just with an iron pick, which is really nice. Going to grab this block last because you're already here. So I like the thought process on that. Also going to organize everything. As I said, very, very organized runner. Wants to have room for everything. Throws the gold, throws the gold. And if I pause right about here, you should notice that there is a fortress leg. And this is how Drip sees the fortress. This is how he sees it. So he's going to go to his right now, grab the rest of the obsidian that he needs. Sees it there. Great. Have trades, have everything. Knows I have pearls, knows I have string. 
We have everything we need. We just want uh, 20 obsidian. That's really the only thing we're checking these chests for. We want 20 obsidian. In No Fears World Record, they were able to go to their home portal because it was very close to the fortress. But this is not the case here. We are not close to a home portal. So we need 20 obsidian. We get it in the chest. Great. Now we're going to throw a pearl here. But wait. Oh, if you did you catch it? Did you? It's very light. But top runners will sprint jump to throw a pearl. I shouldn't say top runners. This is a pretty well-known thing. So think about momentum in Minecraft, right? Sprint jumping is faster than just sprinting. So sprinting and throwing a pearl is slower than sprint jumping and throwing a pearl. But if you're a little bit like early or a little bit off your timing, your pearl doesn't go as far as you'd like. And that's what happens here. It's very, very, very subtle, but the pearl just does not go nearly as far as Drip wants here. And you'll see it adds to an interesting kind of just thing that happens here. So he's going to think that the pearl is in lava. He's trying to land on the fort. That's why he's like this. He's trying to land on the fort, trying to block clutch on the fort, getting ready, getting ready. But then it's like, wait, the pearl hasn't landed yet. So pivots to going in F5 and is looking up. And you're like, why would you go in F5 and look up if your pearl lands in the lava? Well, what it does is it lets you see the entire like surrounding. It basically gets rid of the lava overlay so you can see very, very easily. It's almost like x-ray. It's not actually x-ray, but it's like, that's the, the best way I can describe it. And it's allowed, it's totally legal. And that's what I assume he was going for here. That's what I assume the situation was. And unfortunately, well, I guess fortunately, because he doesn't have to swim all the way up, but it, it makes this odd interaction happen on the fortress where he's in F5 mode looking straight up. And it just doesn't really make sense if you don't understand it. Because you might be like, why? Why is a top runner doing that? So I wanted to explain that. That's why he's in that weird situation there. But he's just going to build up and pearl on top of the fortress now. Has food still, which is great. The buried treasure food is going to make his life incredibly easy. And you can hear some strays on the fortress. Great, we have strays. Insta-kill four blazes here before even getting to a spawner. 0 for 1, though, on blaze rods. Not great. 0 for 2, not great. See another blaze near the spawner. 0 for 3, though. Not ideal. And you'll see that people are starting to join the chat. More on that later. On You saw no one was really in the chat before, but you'll see as this run progresses and progresses and progresses, more people are going to start joining the chat here. And we're going to touch on that later in the run. Really cool thing if you want to stay on top of like top speedrun paces if you're really interested in this type of stuff i'll show you how to do that but we're for now we're still in the fortress we have tnt from the buried treasure and we're going to use that to blow up the spawner create more spawning space for the blazes has a little bit of a weird interaction here but nothing too crazy we're gonna hit the blazes away from the tnt so the stuff doesn't get blown up cool this guy's a one shot because you hit him earlier great we have five rods we were 0 for three now we're five for eight five straight we're gonna build this portal beautiful portal build you see that bum bum beautiful side build and we have more blazes that just spawn. We only have five rods, so we still have to try and get six here. This isn't going to be a situation like No Fears World Record where we're just leaving on five. This pace is good enough where we're going to definitely kill those blazes and try and get six. We're also going to do all this calculator stuff. If you're not familiar with this, what we're trying to do is we're trying to line up the right side of the middle alignment of the crosshair. We're trying to line the right side of that with the in-between section of these two pixels. It doesn't matter like vertically, just like these two pixels. I just show it here because this is where the color is the most obvious. This kind of line is where we want to line it up. He's a little bit off when he F3Cs to copy his location, but you can edit it in the calculator based on if you know exactly how many pixels you're off of, and most top runners know that. So he is 100% sure the stronghold is 821 blocks away, which is above average, really nice. And now we're leaving. We're ready to go. This is a sub five overworld two. We know where we're going. This is not unheard of pace, but it's incredibly, incredibly fast. And now it's unheard of pace because we got the sixth rod and the terrain is beautiful. You can see we're going at 182, negative 250. You can't see the cords because of my face cam, but if I turn that off for a second, you can see we're basically there. We're at 174, negative 249. We're there. We're just at the cords already on one pearl throw. And the big decider and kind of all of these top speedruns for world record at this point are how good is your terrain going to second portal? How good is your terrain overall in the speedrun? And how good are your blazes? Really fast blazes. Did not spend basically any time in that fortress that wasn't just killing blazes. Now we're looking for preemptive. Let me rewind for a second here. So I show you kind of what we're talking about here. We're loading into the stronghold. We're looking for a big orange spike again. We're in a different pie chart, but we're going to go to the one that we want to go to. This is the same one as the buried treasure. We're just using different numbers on the keypad to get to where we need to go. And we're looking for big orange spike. This is not a big enough orange spike. We want to see like at least half. We want to see at least half on the big orange spike. Oh, spawner. Very nice. Heading here now. Looking for it. Very kind of wacky stronghold here with the cave and everything. But Drip, very confident in the preemptive. Knows exactly where they're going. Silverfish 
kerfuffle. It's all fine. Also, by the way, this is the fastest end enter pace ever. And more importantly, in the history of speedrunning, this is the fastest stronghold enter ever. There, it was the, This is the fastest stronghold ever at enter ever. It is beaten finally. A 527 by Crooks was there for almost two years, but is finally beaten. This was a 522. Insane. Fastest end enter, as I said. We're going to use something called search crafting here. You might be wondering why this is in a different language. It's to make crafting like this easier at the end of a run where you're very nervous. Have nerves. You can just type like two letters and you have everything you need. He's playing in Norwegian, if you're curious. And every runner kind of uses whatever's most comfortable to them. You can also notice we're not going for zero cycle, like no fears world record. It's a little bit risky here with six explosives. And this was a back dragon. Obviously, he didn't know that ahead of time. Um, but if he was prepared to go to zero. This was a significantly harder zero cycle than the one that No Fear got. No Fear zero cycle, not to discredit it in any way, was just like one of the easier setups. This would have been very, very hard. We can see the dragon's going across. He needs to get a perch, and he gets a very fast perch on the fastest end enter ever. That is incredibly lucky. This is about like a 10 to 15% chance, and he's one cycling. We're done. We're done with the run already. He is one cycling the dragon, and he's gonna kill it. This is a 701 world record by Drip. Please go check Trip out. Unbelievably well played. Really well done to keep pressure under nerds. And the thing that I noticed as someone who does a lot of runs myself, very, very organized and very just confident in your own ability, doing what you need to do to be a top runner. And that's what he did. And he's now the world record holder. Incredibly well done. As I said, you might be wondering, how did all these people get in the chat? There was like, there wasn't too many people talking in the chat. And then, oh my gosh, it's just flooding. And the way it works is there's a new thing called paceman.gg. This is made by my friend Speckner. This is a really, really cool um, program that basically takes top speedrunners and shows you when they're entering the nether, when they're at any point in the run. And there's also a Discord for it, so you can get pinged when people are in super good pace, like if you get want to get pinged for a sub fine blind travel or something like that, you can go in the Discord and you can see top paces happen live. So when he was running, he people saw like, oh my gosh, this is a what, a 330 fort? I need to get in this run. I need to see the 330 fort. And people start coming in and coming in. And it's really awesome for the speedrunning community because we all get to be there and watch the run live. Really awesome. Again, huge shout out to Drip for performing just a phenomenal run. And I hope you enjoyed this breakdown. I know it was really fast. We got a lot to do. Enjoy. And uh, I will see you next time. Peace out, everyone.